You're my friend from CNN. Hi, Joe. I know. Yeah, no problem. Hello, Info Warriors. On the 26th day of March 2010, CNN called me and they said, We want you to come in and do an interview and tell us if it's your fault that all this violence is happening uh, against supposed uh, congressmen and others in the government in the aftermath of Obamacare. And I said, let me guess, you're going to interview me for 10 or 15 minutes and then put 30 seconds of it on the news. And they laughed and said, that's exactly what we're going to do. And I said, fine, I'll come in because if I refuse, you're going to say that uh, I wouldn't come to the interview. Alex Jones refused to be interviewed for this piece. So I said I'd come in, but why did I really come in? Because when I went down to this TV studio, I brought one of my crew with me with a little handheld phone camera to shoot what actually happened. Now, we couldn't jack in to the audio, they wouldn't let us, to hear what CNN was saying, but we do have my responses to their short questions. We're going to show that. Now, Anderson Cooper hasn't aired yet tonight. We don't even know right now if they're going to include me in the piece. We don't know what their response is, but I would guess it's less than 30 seconds in the five-minute piece they told me they were producing. So I thought I would let you see what happened behind the scenes and what I actually said to CNN. You can't hear their questions, but it was like a broken record. Are you causing the violence? And I explained that no, the establishment with its tyranny is causing the violence, and the evidence shows most of this is staged. But I indicted CNN for promoting weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, for covering up 9-11, and a lot more. This is a very important piece. Again, you will hear my responses to their questions shot live while they were interviewing me. This is a behind the scenes view you're about to see of how the media spins and distorts and takes 15 minutes of answers I gave them and spinning it down to 30 seconds. Who knows what they're going to choose to air? They may not even air it. We're about to find out. Well, we have the uh, large central banks in Bloomberg calling for taking the population's pension funds and 401ks and investing it to prop up the derivatives bubble. That's what's generating the anger. I am personally angry, and so is the American people. I mean, 98% in many polls were against the banker bailout of 2008. So the corrupt system is stirring up anger. That's like saying, uh, are you angry at Hitler in 19... Uh, 39 Germany uh, because you're an angry person. No, I'm angry at Hitler because Hitler was bad. And so the system is manifestly corrupt, looting and robbing the people. They're ignoring the will of the American people. They're violating the Bill of Rights and Constitution. And so anyone who is a constitutionalist is upset, uh, just like our founding fathers were upset. And so, you know, our military marches off and kills a million people in Iraq, and that's supposedly a good thing. And then, uh, Americans raise their voices and the media acts like it's the end of the world. What's happening here is the mainstream media doesn't control perception anymore. They don't control reality. They're not up on the mountain telling us what we can and can't do. And so there's this, uh, been this attempted demonization of the Tea Party movement and anybody who's criticizing the government trying to tie them to a few radicals that are out there. And it's just not going to work. The American people see through this. But not just the American people, the people of Iceland, the people of Greece, the people all over the world who are tired of being robbed by the IMF and the World Bank and the private Federal Reserve. And so I am angry. I am angry. And so is the population. And we're rightfully angry. I have a lot of the same concerns as the, quote, Tea Party movement, but the Tea Party movement itself is very, very diverse. There's libertarians, there's classical liberals, there's conservatives, uh, there's a lot of people that make up what you call the Tea Party movement, and you have the attempt by the, uh, by the Republican Party to try to take over the Tea Party movement. So really, the Tea Party movement's a very, very uh, diverse group. Well, let's be clear. I'm not like CNN and Fox promoting imaginary made-up WMDs in Iraq so that our military could go kill a million innocent Iraqis. So, no, I don't advocate for violence like the New York Times and CNN. I want to make that clear. I do believe in working through the courts, but also through the states, to have them nullify these federal laws on highways and on schools and on every issue and on medical issues, the federal government more and more is taking over the states. So I advocate the Ninth and Tenth Amendment powers of the state nullifying these unconstitutional federal laws. And I support getting rid of the Seventeenth Amendment and bringing our senators back to the state level so they're controlled by the elected legislature. I don't advocate shock and awe like CNN did, okay? 
I don't have the blood of a million dead people on my hands. I'm not a fake liberal who poses like they're against war. That's your question. I didn't kill a million Iraqis like those of you at CNN who push the lies. I'm not a murderer. I think the rhetoric of the mainstream media lying about WMDs has caused a lot of the loss of trust. I think that the banker bailout, they claimed the $784 billion was to unfreeze mortgages, and the next day they said, we're not going to tell you where the money's going, we're not spending it on that. I think that's what's to blame for the rhetoric, and I also know that most of these threats on congressmen and attacks on offices are staged. Here's the Denver Post from 08. Obama workers arrested attacking their own facility in a staged event to get sympathy. So, and I also think the mainstream media promoting the few attacks that have happened and hyping it are going to cause mentally ill, lone nuts to engage in more. And that's why the, the congressman who's, who reportedly got his office shot up is now telling the media to stop hyping this. But the media knows exactly what it's doing. It's hoping a bunch of lone nuts hearing you talk about this 24-7 go out and commit more acts so that you can try to discredit the American people that are exposing the unconstitutional, out-of-control tyranny going on in Congress. But no, I think most of it's staged, just like all the campuses where they get caught painting fake swastikas up. This is all political warfare to demonize opposition to big government and tyranny. No, no, but that's a loaded question. It's like, well, let me ask CNN, have you ever advocated violence? And yes, we know you have. I have said that if they're loading people on FEMA trucks to take us to death camps, and they have legislation in Congress to allow the arrest of U.S. citizens, the Belligerent Act, that Americans have a right to defend themselves just like Germans had a right to defend themselves from Hitler. But I am against offensive action because we're winning peaceably and politically. The country is waking up. I have always spoken out against violence. In the last three months, I have predicted that the establishment would stage fake attacks against itself as a pretext to demonize their opposition. You guys can't change the subject off of this health care bill and the fact that it doesn't cover children with pre-existing conditions, that members of Congress and, and of the executive branch have been selectively made uh, to not be part of the program and to be exempt or the fact uh, that it cuts Medicare and Medicaid and that the insurance companies wrote the bill. That's the big dirty secret is the insurance companies actually wrote mu much of this bill and that's why their stock's way up right now. And they are the ones that advocate the political violence, the tasering, the naked body scanners, the pushing the American people trying to break our will and turn us into slaves like the people of communist Russia or Nazi Germany. And so it's the system squeezing and squeezing and squeezing the American people that is pushing some of the American people into acts of desperation. But I tell those people watching, do not do that. Be like Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be nonviolent like Martin Luther King. And we are going to overturn the despotic system that is in this country. We are going to take it back no matter how many staged terror attacks the government t carries out like Oklahoma City in 9-11. You will never stop the truth and you cannot stop the truth. It is out there and ideas are bulletproof. Myself or Ron Paul? Um, I mean, I think the New York Times and Newsweek and several other publications got it right when they said that I am basically the prophet of the Tea Party movement, and that's because m my ideas of the Constitution influence the largest spectrum of people represented by the Tea Party, but it goes much deeper uh, than that. So, yes, I think that I'm a good person to interview, but other people are important to interview as well to find out what we really think, what we're really saying. The problem is the media puts it all in little sound bites. I want stability. I want to fix this country. I want to get the out of control corporate uh, behavior uh, back in check. But it's not going to happen because these arrogant, hubris filled politicians and the Fortune 100. Uh, know how to manipulate the population and believe they're in total control and, 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 and now they've committed everything to this banking world government takeover and so we're in an emergency situation here.